The prophecy foretold the end of kingdoms of man, elf, and dwarf. But no diviner or prophet could discern the reason why the kingdoms would come to an end. Adventurers set out in droves to discover the reasons why the world would be coming to an end. My halfling divination wizard, Sarah Dippity, in her adventures discovered a wheel of stars, a magic item that mapped out the stars on a slab of stone. This video is about villains, by the way, just stick with me. When in my research I discovered that the wheel of stars was a part of a set of magic items, my group knew what we were doing next. Finally, a lead. An important magic item that we found hidden away over hundreds of years. This probably has something to do with it. Let's get a wagon and a donkey and we'll set out to the place where the magic items were created or the last known place where the magic items were. On the way there, we came across a guard checkpoint blocking the road. One of the guards was casting detect magic on all of the carts and they soon discovered that we had this magic item and they said they had orders to take this magic item. This was new information to us. We didn't know much about the guards or the kingdom, if they were to be trusted, if, if, if this was good what they were doing. So we fought the guards. I mean, it's not like the guards were evil. They were just following the orders that were given to them. But who was giving those orders? The, the guard captain, the king? We don't know who those are or what they want. It was a frustrating and confused moment at the table. There was apprehension of whether or not we should be fighting these guards or if we should just give up the item. We definitely didn't want to give up the item. It was our only lead as to this world ending prophecy. But also, should we be killing these guards? Behind the scenes, the DM wanted to give us a mysterious magic item, but didn't didn't anticipate us doing like research on the item or trying to find out more about it. We've all been there as DMs, the players suddenly go off in a direction that we had no anticipation that they would be going on and so we have to figure out some sort of obstacle to keep them at bay so we can prepare the next chunk of the adventure that they're apparently going on. What went wrong in this specific session, in my opinion, is one, you're trying to take a magic item away from players. Players hate that. Just in general, having to lose a magic item really sucks. And so any character trying to take a magic item away from the players, there's going to be a, a, a layer of apprehension. Another reason why I think it went wrong is that we didn't understand who was taking this magic item away from us. Like we know what's the guard. We know the guards are trying to take this magic item away from us, but why do they want it? Why should we give it to them? Can they be trusted? We don't know. So it's initiative, I guess. The problem was that we didn't have a villain. We were encountering obstacles, but the obstacles felt more like it was the DM trying to set obstacles in front of us instead of someone in the world who was resisting our movements. How about instead of just a guard checkpoint who have orders to take this magic item away from us, before we set out on the road, we hear that the king is a mad tyrant who's confiscating all the magic artifacts in the kingdom. Now we know the king isn't to be trusted. The king is evil. It's okay to fight against the king and all those who are loyal to him. Him. Or maybe a rival adventuring party who's also trying to complete the set that we have and they want all the gold for themselves and so they're trying to steal the magic item from us because they want the, the they want the prestige and glory of discovering this ancient set of magic items. As a DM, it is your job to put obstacles in front of the players. Villains will turn those obstacles into narrative, into drama. An obstacle without a villain is a setback. An obstacle with a villain is an opportunity for trouble. I feel like most players are okay with something devastating happening to them and, and their characters if it serves the story. Let's say the players have a stronghold as their main base of operations and the DM sends a comet down and destroys the stronghold. And that's it, no one sent the, the meteor that hit the, the stronghold. Uh, it just kind of fell from the sky and then the stronghold got leveled players are gonna walk away with a bitter taste in their mouth. We had this really cool thing going and then it was just taken away from us. Instead, hear me out, an army of dragons is invading the kingdom and during their invasion, they attack, they assault the stronghold, the player stronghold, and then level it tear it to the ground. Now, the players have a rival. They have someone to take revenge against. Now there's drama, there's story. Now we have to face off against this army of dragons. Both outcomes, the meteor outcome and the dragon outcome, lead to the same thing. You just wiped out the player's stronghold. One outcome, they walk away from the table with a bitter taste in their mouth,
house and they probably don't want to play anymore. And the other outcome, you've given them a story. You've given them a prompt. You've given them a, a goal to complete that their characters can complete. It's opportunity for triumph, not just a random setback. I think this is all partly why Strahd makes such a good and iconic villain. It feels reasonable in the story that at any point during the campaign, Strahd can just show up and then mess your whole day up. Which means as a DM, you have a lot of opportunities to create obstacles for your players and then uh, let Strahd be the narrative reason as to why those obstacles are happening. Without Strahd as the villain, all the obstacles the DM would be setting would just kind of feel like you're kind of putting your leg in front of the players to trip over. If you want to be able to challenge or even foil your player characters, you need to find a narrative reason to do so and villains are the best way to go about that. Now all you gotta do is make um, a good villain. Easy, right? <laughs> Hello there, my name is Dr. Nicholas Dickless, and at Dice Brain Labs, we work on synthesizing the best possible villains for your TTRPG campaigns. We've been working tirelessly on finding what are the common qualities of all the good villains, and how can you make those qualities into your own original villain for your tabletop games. Now, if you were to watch any video on YouTube about writing villains for anything, they're always going to say it comes down to motivation. Motivation is going to be very important for your villain because it gives you the reason as to why there is a villain. People, typically, do not like to commit unethical acts unless they believe there is a solid reason for it. The motivations I'm going to be listing as examples are going to be kept intentionally vague so you can sort of fill in the gaps yourself. So feel free to take inspiration from this, but I wouldn't copy directly from it. First example we're going to be using is power. That's a classic motivation. Power could be political power, magical power, maybe even military power. Whatever it is, your villain is either trying to gain more of it or hold on to what they have. Sauron, Lord of the Rings, they're trying to expand their military power, magical power, all the power, all of it. They're trying to expand their power. They're trying to take over Middle Earth. Star Wars, the Empire, the Emperor, he's trying to keep what power he has against the Rebellion. Now, if your motivation for your villain is going to be power, you may want to have a reason as to why they want this kind of power. It could just be domination over the entire known world, or it could be for a different reason. Something that kind of connects back to power would be wealth. This is good if you have some kind of criminal or corrupt politician, someone whose main goal is to accrue as much wealth as possible. Dragons. Perfect motivation for dragons. Typically a good villain will take more than they need which sort of pushes the players to intervene when this villain is trying to take just more than they require. So greed is definitely going to be a part of this. If your villain's motivation is wealth, they're not going to stop at just what they need. They're going to take more and more and more. Next would be, um, we classified here at Dice Brain Labs as alternative guidance. Now, uh, alternative guidance, what our definition is at Dice Brain Labs is someone who thinks that they're doing the right thing, but they are very misguided. But they definitely think they're doing the right thing. They think their solution to whatever problem there is, is correct. Thanos, the perfect example of this. They see a problem, which is there, there's not enough resources for everyone to survive, and so their alternative guidance would be to kill half of the universe. These are typically your morally gray villains, villains who, uh, the, the ends justify the means kind of a villain. Whatever they do to get to where they need to be uh, is, is valid in their eyes. Or maybe your villain doesn't have a motivation and they're just a sadist, like uh, like the Joker or something like that. So they just like to be evil for fun. This could be fun sometimes, but like use it sparingly. Uh, it might bore your players when the villain is just like being a villain and evil just because they like to be evil. A subcategory of alternative guidance would be fear. Uh, alternative guidance probably stems from fear, but us at Dice Brain Labs, we haven't found like exact evidence for this. But the alternative guidance probably comes from what the villain is scared will happen. Maybe a, an evil king is scared of a tribe of orcs that are peaceful, but they're going to attack the tribe of orcs because they're fearful of the orcs invading their kingdom. Normally, this fear is very unjustified and it's fear of something that they don't really understand, which is typically where most fear comes from. Next on our uh, villain building example sheet, we're going to include what their methods are. Now the motivations can be very much evil, but if their methods don't match up with their motivation, you can create an inconsistent kind of villain. Our villain to be 
evil. We want the players to know that these guys are the bad guys and they are unambiguously bad and destroying them is a good thing. So not only what the villains want is unethical, but how they go about things is going to be unethical. One thing that's common for villains is that people are expendable. Can I fit this all in? Yes, okay. Villains don't typically have mercy for people who are beneath them, unless of course it serves them. Typically you'll find villains who sacrifice their minions for no apparent reason, who will uh, let a village of innocent people die if it means they get closer to their own goals. Your villain's new mantra is going to be by any means necessary. Whatever the villain is trying to complete, they will not let anything get in the way of that. It doesn't matter what gets in their way, they are going to go after what they have set out to get. They are not going to let other people get in their way, they're not going to let nature get in their way, they are going to push through whatever obstacle is in front of them. And also, they're going to be self-interested. A good villain is going to act within their own interests no matter what. In your villain's mind, what their motivation is is going to trump everything else. And I mean everything else. Which is going to include exploiting others for their own benefit. This is a good way of communicating that your villain is evil. And remember, villains aren't going to let morality get in the way of achieving their goals. So exploiting others beneath them is what they're going to do in order to get what they want. There you have it. After years of synthesizing, we figured out what makes a perfect D&D villain. All you need is someone who is self-interested, willing to exploit others in order to gain more power and or wealth, and then you have No, it can't. It can't be. The villain in every D and D campaign. It's it's just been capitalism. It's just been capitalism. This whole time. It's always been capitalism! That, uh, uh, that got weird again. If you want some actual advice when it comes to making your villains absolutely despised and hated by your players, you should check out the interview I did with Faiza Owo. She has the most perfect technique for making her villains just incredibly hated by her player characters. It's actually genius. If you're trying to flesh out one of your villains for a TTRPG game, you absolutely need to check it out. Aside from that, I want to say thank you to my patrons on Patreon. They're perfect and amazing and they give me money so that I can keep making videos. I run D&D for my patrons on my Discord. Um, Discord's also open for people who aren't in the Patreon game. Sometimes we do one shots. We're also doing a bad movie night. I think if this video, if this video comes out on on the 9th. The bad movie night is tonight. Uh, so if you're watching this video on the day it came out, you might be able to go and see it. Also updated the merch store so that it's not going to shut down uh, randomly. I got a, a Shopify store. It's not a drop shipping thing, by the way. I actually make the products. Like I have, I have the physical products at my house and I will personally ship it to you if you buy them. Aside from that, uh, like the video and uh, maybe even subscribe. Uh, that's the end of this video. You should see the interview or maybe another one of my videos. I don't know. Um, 